give it up, give a big flat earth social welcome to Mr. Martin Leeker. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you guys. Awesome to be here. I'm really buzzing to be here. I can't, can't believe so many people turned up. I can't believe so many people are, you know, still actually, you know, looking for the truth and being brave and being courageous and getting out there, out of the house, breaking pattern, yeah, getting out, meeting people and uh, making the effort to come and meet yours truly. So, I'm Martin Lietzka. I don't know if, uh, you know, if you don't know me already, I'm aka Flat Earth British on YouTube. I've been there for nine years from the get-go, really. Came in not far after Max Sargent and Jeronism and... Eric Dubay and all the rest, Matt Poland. And um, I had a voice in my head, actually. It was the weirdest thing, right? Um, I was, when I basically first got into Flat Earth and I first realised, I was like, oh, my God. Um, I had a voice in my head and it, it said this. It said these words. It said, um, if you let this pass you by, you will regret it to the day you die. <laughs> so I thought, well, yeah, better not let this pass me by then. So I started posting. And I was, like, not really into it at the time. But I thought, you know, the message... And, you know, the deeper implications of what was happening was far too important than worrying about my own safety, my own ego and all the rest of it. So I just let go and I spoke the truth. And it's been a hell of a journey since. I've gone down so many roads, so many things have happened, you wouldn't believe it. It's been the adventure of a lifetime, bringing the truth to the people. I've, walked, I've literally walked tens of millions at this stage. And all of the truth first, we've got to all get together and we keep on pushing with this. And it's not, not, it's not going to be beyond the pounds possibility that there will be a critical mass, a tipping point, when, you know, everybody would be freely okay to talk about Flat Earth without being ridiculed, you know? Because, you know, in the early days of Flat Earth, you know, I, people like Simon Dan, you know, excuse my language, he's shit out of nowhere, you know? He's like, you know, he's committed to his cause of making videos about Flat Earthers every day. Now, there are stacks of them, you know? And when he first made a video, uh, you know, about me, um, which was really rubbish, by the way. Um, I just got like inundated by thousands of glow people every day. And they had the most unkindest people. I couldn't believe it. They were saying things like, did your mother drop on your head? Why didn't you go and kill yourself? This, that, the other. So I was waking up every single day. I was going to my computer and my vibration was instantly dropped and I was really down. And, I'm, you know, it was basically hurting my soul. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I'm just not designed for that, you know, I'm an empath, I can't take that shit. So I basic, basically thought, well, I'm just going to be like, you know, I'm just going to be constantly attacked in this. So I looked into a field that I was interested in, which was alternative history, okay? Um, where I live in Cardiff, there's a load of um, what archaic buildings, which all had the dates on them of around 1880s, 1870s. So my question was, and it has been right through my life, is, Where's the rest of the old world? Where is everything? It's either Gothic churches or 1780s. Where is the rest of the world? Where's the rest of the human race? Well, well we, you, know, they, they, you know, with their evolutionary ideas, which obviously is just a theory and rubbish, um, they tell you that we have learned nothing, right, um, until the last 150 years, or maybe since the Industrial Revolution, and we got smart all of a sudden, and all of this stuff just appeared in the last 150 years. We went from the Kitty Hawk to the Hadron Collider within 50 years. It just makes no sense, okay? Something else has been going on. And the history books, they're lies. They just go to the victors, okay? The real history is far more interesting. And, and I can see why they hid it as well, okay? I can see why they hid, hid the real history and what's been happening in this place. And the flat earth is a biggie. That was brought in by the same people who cover the information about the, the historical narrative. Okay, it's exactly the same controllers. The controllers, if you're looking for a name to put on them, um, I call them the Phoenicians. Okay, you can call them who you want if everyone's looking for a name game, blame game in this. That's a bad energy attachment. I don't really do this. I know that there's a power out there, okay, which has not got um, our best interests at heart. We'd love to shut us up because it's going to change people's paradigms, you know? Um, Sven will tell you, I did debating... Oh, there you are. So, very sorry. Um, I did debating in the um, Botanical Gardens here um, the last time I appeared in this... Uh, no, the last time I visited this venue. And we were debating uh, people just from the street in Bournemouth. And it, it, then it occurred to me how far we need to go. 80% <laughs> were just fast asleep, watching their televisions, not knowing anything about their reality. Um, few, few people had open minds, were willing to consider it, and other people were just plain abusive. I was like, oh dear. And I've been doing street activism for, you know, something like a decade now, you know, coming up to, and 
it's really difficult. You know, we got, you know, it's a hard game, you know, to, to get people to come around, to, you know, just to question their reality. What are we actually talking about, guys? What are we standing on? You know, perspective is not curvature. This is a simple one. You know, I've been searching for the curve for 10 years. Yeah, it is not there. It is not there. Can you hear me at the back? Yeah, could you hear me by there? No? All right, very sorry. Um, and the reason I hauled it away is because I did a convention once in Birmingham and there was a woman sat by there. She said, do you mind keeping your voice down? <laughs> and then she nodded off in the chair. I was like, oh, am I that dull? So yeah, I'm going to start this off. We're going to have a little giggle, right? What I like to do best is have a little giggle at the absurdity and the ridiculousness. That is NASA, okay? That is just ridiculous in its, in its, uh, its entirety. I'm going to show you some of the images that I collected years ago. I got what's called a NASA butter file, okay? If people are believers in the, uh, the globe idea, um, after watching this, um, what I'm going to show you now, you're going you're gonna to have to think to yourself, well, that is not exactly humanly possible, and they are lying, okay? In fact, you know, I wrote this book uh, back in 2018. Um, it was released, and then, and then COVID hit. It went absolutely nuts. That was my first book. Now, to my mind, this was, uh, I think, the hardest evidence to support the flat Earth. This was the double torus electromagnetic model, which is encoded everywhere in our reality. In fact, you can't even miss it. It was overwhelming, <laughs> overwhelming evidence of the flat Earth in the Holy Grail of the flat Earth. So, without uh, further ado, we're going to look at the NASA Bert Hurt file. Now, I collected this and a load of NASA images back, um, actually, 2014, before I um, actually talked about Flat Earth. I'd, you know, I, I'm old enough to remember the, the lunar missions, okay? Um, I was about five when the colour ones were happening, you know, the later ones, when they were ripping around on the moon in there, in their beach buggies and stuff. And I remember sitting, it was on every channel at the time, so you couldn't really avoid it, yeah? It was like HTV, ITV, when you had three channels back then. And I remember sitting there on the floor and thinking, no, nah, no, nah, that can't be happening. That can't, even then, at five, it's just like, this can't be happening. That's just rubbish. Men ripping around on the moon in cars. Yeah, whatever, I'll get it up there. <laughs> so I, I selected a load of uh, NASA images early, which show you the Gemini mission and some of the Apollo missions. Now, what you find, okay, what you find with space missions, right, first just remember, it's an absolute vacuum, okay? It's scorching hot and freezing cold all at the same time. Don't worry, I'm not going to go into that. And what you find as well, right, is there's a man hanging round in space, taking photographs of everything. <laughs> like every satellite you ever see, I know they're CGI, but let's just pretend for a minute that they're real, okay? So there's a man hanging round in space, and he's taking photographs of space, space shrimps, as we like to call them in the front of So uh, <laughs> the limb is ridiculous. I went to the... Um, so, Earth rise. Now, if this was a reality, working on the dramatic dynamics of, uh, you know, how big the moon is supposed to be compared to the Earth, like a fourth of the size, then in reality, if that was a reality, it would fill the entire horizon of the moon, which is bullshit. So, yeah, they've led everyone to believe they're on a, a blue ball. Spinning in space, erratically, uh, breakneck speeds in different directions, all at the same time. And where are we going? Well, they don't really know, see, because the universe is expanding and it's accelerating into nothing, because they don't know. But whatever. So, <laughs> there are thousands of NASA images you could pull apart. The lighting problems, the lighting discrepancies. And, you know, this is the, apparently the limb that's landed down, which on the film shows a huge plume of dust coming up, but the dust doesn't settle into the legs of the, uh, of the uh, limb at all. So, yeah, I went to uh, the Space Centre in uh, Leicester uh, back a few years ago, with a load of flat earthers, Nathan Oakley, people like that. Um, and they had a version of the limb in there, and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, did they actually sell people They went up in that? This thing looks like a junk pile. It looks like it's been in a skip, okay? And they say that they took this, the, um, not in this mission, but later missions, they took the, um, the moon module, the car, the greatest, most expensive car in reality, they tucked it away up to Europe. And apparently, they change into their spacesuits 
inside this tiny little module. So I don't want to discuss how decompression works and the vacuum outside and inside when they open the doors. They must be really big in there, like a TARDIS maybe, where there's um, space for decompression. So the moon, okay, well, if you follow that Earth, you're going to know about Dr. Tet, okay? Do you know about Dr. Tet, the NASA scientist? Oh, he's a very, very embarrassing human being, actually. He's, he's one of NASA's um, paid uh, jokes. Um, he, he basically stated that we destroyed all the telemetry to go to the moon, and it's a painful process to put it back together again. Meaning, they could never go to the moon again. Unless you're in India, and then you could go to the moon. So yeah, this was 1969, so they thought like when the, um, the, the um, link was taken off to go back up, to link up to uh, Michael Collins, who's supposedly orbiting. Remember what orbiting means? Orbiting means falling away, falling away from a body at 17,500 miles an hour. And apparently that's the same true for the moon. Anything on slingshot, 17,500 miles an hour. So apparently this goes up and catches Michael Collins is going to 79,000 miles an hour orbiting the moon and just coincidentally meets up with him, links up, and comes back 250,000 miles to Earth. Ridiculous. So there's many um, ideas that Stanley Kubrick uh, probably uh, directed this movie in, in the studios in Britain, and a lot of people think it's Arizona, and look at that. And many people have seen the flag. You don't need me to tell you about the flag, do you? Well, they say it was made of aluminium and it naturally crinkles up when you open it, like a sweetie wrapper, and opens like, that's what they say. But if you watch a video, this thing's flapping in the wind because it's in the wind. And another thing they do at the moon, right, is they trash the place. They just leave their junk everywhere. They just don't care. Now, apparently, okay, this stuff left on the moon. Apparently the modules, the original um, landers, all still left on the moon. So in theory, uh, the Hubble Space Telescope, if it was a real thing, should be able to turn around and actually look at the moon and show us these things. That would be really good. But a 380 from one of the ISS uh, astronauts would be really good on their mobile phones. Maybe crank up a live feed on YouTube. That would be really interesting. But obviously never going to be able to do that. So. Beyond that window there, I'm going to show you another image of this window, is a vacuum, absolute vacuum, not a vacuum that doesn't exist on Earth, because it doesn't exist anywhere naturally on Earth, outside of a vacuum chamber, is the worst environment they could possibly imagine or invent, the vacuum. So outside, um, there he is, this is actually Buzz Aldrin on his first ever spacewalk. Before he's um, done any of these Apollo missions, he's on the... Uh, um, Gemini mission when he does his first space work. So he sticks his head out, okay, at the capsule, and it's going to 79,000 miles an hour. Now they say, okay, well, there's no drag because it's a vacuum. But they changed the narrative in the last two years. If you look on Google now, they actually state that the moon is in the Earth's atmosphere. Now that's what they're saying. They say, oh, no, no, the atoms from outside Earth, they're traveling all the way out to the moon, and it's actually closed in in our atmosphere, and there are atoms, and it all causes drag um, on these things. So they can have it both ways, but this thing is apparently falling away. Um, and what you find, we just flick through a couple of images, is the most important, most expensive experiment in human history, okay? And it's all made of gaffer tape, and there's holes everywhere, and there's wires sticking out, and there's lights sticking out. Let me show you some screws missing. Now this... <laughs> No, really, they got screws missing. Well, it's not important, it's only a vacuum of space, it's only human lives, nothing's going to go wrong. Um, this thing here, if you can see this thing in the corner here, I'll show you another image of this car aerial thing. Um, you can see that it's not actually connected to the steel plate. I'll show you another image, because it's hardboard behind, okay? Um, and that's obviously a car speaker, but you can see there's a screw missing there, a screw missing there. But it doesn't matter because it's only the vacuum of space and nothing can happen because... Right, so you've grown up in your space rocket, okay, your space ship, and a wire's ripped out and it's disconnected. There's a big chunk out, like an animal would come along and took a big chunk out of it. And there's a wire hanging down and this is on a spaceship in space and there's nothing going on and there's nothing wrong. And they're not allowed to, they're not going to die at all. 
no imminent danger of dying. Okay, I'll just say it. So yeah, they are pathetic. This is supposed to be in space, okay? So they like green screens since at least, you, know, you can check this out for yourself, Luminate Brothers, French Brothers making films, turn of the last century, 1900s, they were using green screens. They were using uh, what, what essentially like holographic projections, but trickery, camera trickery, 1900s, even before then, the Luminate Brothers were doing it. So you think that's not possible, that that could be in a fish tank, which they got, and that that is a green screen in the background. Um, anyway, so let's look at this um, unbelievably ridiculous, excuse me, uh, Gemini. Let me just get to the maggage. Dun, 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 dun. So, no, you've got to do that. So, can you see this uh, car aerial thing here? This wiggly, squiggly thing, which does absolutely nothing. It's just something out of the arts and crafts department to make it look like a spaceship. They use bits of egg carts and wash the liquid bottle on this. It's like a P Blue Peter, here's what we made earlier, you know? And so you can see the hard board sticking out. There's some glimpse of light on one of the other shops as well, sticking out of it because it's not there. Because if it was, they'd all be dead. There's hard board behind that there. And um, I've gone over this with a fine tooth going, it's all gaffer taped up over the holes uh, to stop the vacuum leaking in. That's all you need. That's all you need. If the vacuum is leaking in, it's a bit gaffer tape. No, gaffer tape is really important, guys. Duct tape is better. A uh, bit chewing gum, yeah? So the vacuum is space, no problem. And you need to borrow your car's, your father's car radio speaker and then stick it on your spaceship, yeah? So I had a neighbor years ago called Tudor, he was a bit of a nut case, and he built a spaceship in his garden. Guess what it looked like? Like that. Coincidentally, old Tudor spaceship. I once went in there, I was like, yeah, nice spaceship, Tudor. It's like, thanks, man. Good night in it tonight. I was like, yeah, thank you, man. Nice one, Tudor. So, <laughs> this thing here is a, just an old one, 1960s car aerial type of thing, or a, what I had on my black and white colour television. <laughs> my black and white colour television. <laughs> my black and white television when I was a sprog in my bedroom. I had exactly the same aerial as that. So, uh, they're probably going to speak to President Nixon uh, from that, because they, they can talk to people on Earth. They've got amazing communications from these things these uh, vacuum proof gaffer tape things that they fly with car speakers. I wonder why they would have speakers. What music would they play in space? Oh, that's right. There's no sound in a vacuum, is there? I don't know. Why would they need car speakers? Anyway, so yeah, they, um, they don't cover conduits, they don't cover pipes, they don't cover any messy wiring or broken wiring or anything because it's not important because they don't think anyone's going to actually physically pick these apart in the future, maybe. I don't know why they would be so stupid to let all this, all of this uh, released. But I have picked her apart with a fine tooth comb, to be honest, and they were in NASA, you know, proper NASA images. So, you're in space, okay? Vacuum space is outside, so imminent death is outside. It will suck your eyeballs out of your bum. It's not gonna be a good thing, okay, guys? You've seen how this goes down, right, with Arnold Schweizenegger, uh, when he's on Mars, you know, we'll get Cole Hagen, you know? Uh, Total recall, you know that goes down. That's what's going to happen to you, a vacuum, okay? So there's a big gap under the wind over. It's okay, it's a spaceship, it's safe. It's vacuum outside, so there's a big gap underneath there. Um, but that's okay, and you don't need to paint it over. It's only the most expensive project in human history. No, you don't need to paint it over, no one's going to notice. It's perfectly safe, you will not die. But it does show. Dun, 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 dun. It's ridiculous. So, what are we standing on? What are we standing on? Tesla said you could not measure the dimensions of this place because he said it was a realm. Um, I'm not inclined to go like that, okay? Now, the outer limit, sure, it doesn't seem to be out that any of us can go and have a check for ourselves past the 60th parallel line south. I'm going to check out Antarctica because there is definitely something going on with Antarctica. There's just no doubt about it, guys, you know? You know, they, they think manage the rest of Earth like there's no tomorrow, but we're going to keep that place pristine uh, for experimental purposes, and when you look into it, there's no, there's nothing. Same as NASA. You know, oh yeah, this stuff's really important to mankind. We, we just invented Velcro. Oh, wicked. That should sort things out big time. Thanks, Velcro. So, um, 
they left a load of these, uh, inch chronometers and apparently a mirror on there, which uh, Brian Cockers Cox will tell you, oh, did I just say that out loud? No, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> Brian Cox will tell you um, that they shoot lasers at the moon and back again, okay? But it's obviously hitting the firmament and coming back again, but it's just a spanner, isn't it? So, he actually was on a, a television show, uh, trying to debunk flat earth, um, and this is what he could come out with. This is a professor uh, and a physicist, apparently, but he's not really, he's Tavistock from a shitty rock back, back in the day, isn't he? Dreams can only get better. Um, <laughs> and he said um, that even his children could see the boats going over the horizon. So, that was it. So pity, pitiful, <laughs> don't you think? So yeah, apparently they left all this stuff up there. It's supposed to be up there to this day. Um, but these footprints, um, if you have, there's actually photographs out there. If you compare um, Neil Armstrong's footprints with the footprints there, uh, they don't they don't match at all. Anyway, and there's also Mars bar wrappers left on the moon as well. Apparently, so, so <laughs> it is a phenomenon. The moon, you know, I, I I'm. A, Flat Earther, so I, I'm in the realm of um, I don't really care what's happening up there. <laughs> it's about what's happening here and laterally, you know. Um, I was in a movie last year. I don't know if any of you seen it, The Next Level uh, by Hitler Productions. Um, when I stated that I really do think there's more land, I really do. The electromagnetic model that I presented in this leaves. It, it shows you um, on a map that I will show you shortly uh, from a park in Sydney that shows you a flat Earth map. And it shows you what's called technesmia lines, or the magnetic fields um, around the flat Earth. Basically, the torus field. It, it, the, whoever designed that pack knew everything about what was in there. Um, but it does leave area uh, from separate magnetic fields for other lands. I think that's hard evidence, for me, anyway. And I think they're hiding other lands. I think that's what it's all about. Um, and de and demeaning us, um, taking away the creator. Obviously, Fibonacci sequence, um, the golden ratio for me, and when you get down to it, it's bits of information. Something or someone has encoded this place. Someone has put this place here, and it is all mathematics, which is all, the only weapon they've got against anything is mathematics. Everything is based in theory. Nothing is based in reality. So, for me, it was easy, because I always go with, my personal experience, my consciousness experience, what my experience in this place, and I'm never, I, I, you know, whatever anyone else thinks is great, but I'm never going to ever see a globe, ever, and nobody will ever see a globe. None of us will ever see one. The only place you'll see it is on the internet, on a shitty tag. It's the only place it exists. It doesn't exist anywhere else. So what does this place look like? Well, I always dreamt it was one of my dreams early in flat Earth because I'm into maps to be able to be given the map of this place. And I actually had a dream once, and I was in Istanbul, and an Arab guy came up to me outside the uh, Hagia Sophia, which I visited in the past, and he said, I've got the map. I was like, what? And I followed him, and he disappeared, and I literally woke up in a cold sweat. It's like, Argh! I was that far away from the real map, if it's even possible to have a real map. Like I said, perspective is not curvature, there is no curvature, and to me, you know, I've got different ideas of what I think is going on, you know, I think that there's water above, okay, because the sky is blue, it looks like water, Bible says there's waters above, there's waters below, and lots of other things also say there's water as above, waters below, um, I instinctively feel, because of my research into resets, uh, namely Noah's flood, etc., um, that water comes in from elsewhere, um, and I think it's the firmament. And what it is, I think there's windows, could be made of glass, could be made of thick blue glass, or electromagnetic layers, or even, um, you can hold water in place with an acoustic sound. You can hold water in stasis with an acoustic sound. So I proposed in a flat earth, flat earth book that I wrote, that Mount Meru in the center looks exactly like an upside down speaker and acts the same. It was given up a low audible frequency, okay, which is the sound everyone can hear, the hum, uh, the Bristol hum, some people regard it as the hum, um, and it holds um, the dome in stasis. That's one idea, I think, anyway. But I definitely think there's water above. Um, I think there's a wider sea above as well. 
in the wider ocean. And um, in my field, um, I, I go into, as I said, resets. Um, and um, I think that Noah's flood um, was more recent than what the Bible tells us. And there was lots of survivors, but most people perished, and it's called a reset. And this happens cyclically. Okay? Uh, civilization gets so far with this conscious evolution that they have to, they have to fry it. Okay? They have to end it. Now, consciousness at the moment is in a lot. Everyone is struggling for energy. Everyone, the whole place, not just a not just a whole realm, everyone is saying exactly the same. And the sun is on a white LED when it was a yellow sodium. The sun is losing energy. This place is losing energy. Okay? And consciousness is suffering. But the good news is, this has happened before. When we get through this rough patch here, which is the reset, which we're, we're going through right now, we're, we're mid-flows of this reset, they're switching over to AI, they're integrating it, smart cities, you know this is gonna go down, it's a big, bad beast, you know? We've gotta find a way to get around to all of this, that's gonna be a science in itself, yeah? We get to a point in consciousness, and then they stop it. And then we start over and we get to a place where we were before, which I'm going to show you examples from when I talk about my subject. Um, in the 1800s, up to the point of reset, consciousness was at a higher standing. The creativity in humans was off the radar. Their handwriting was perfect. Their um, writing was perfect. Everything, their, their literature, what was coming out of that period was fantastic, including the architecture, but none of that architecture can be copied in the modern day. All they're doing now is steel and glass, temporary buildings made out of concrete blocks and uh, corrugated iron, because it's built temporary for a reason, because they're not too concerned about the future. And why would that be? We're gonna go through this whether we want it or not. It's been happening since you know when, and the world is just recovering. People are in trauma, they don't know, and after all the weirdness, and it just got extra weird now, since then, and people don't know which way to turn. It's a really, really confusing state of affairs. It's okay, it's okay, because that's what happens. Consciousness gets really confused, it bumps into one another, it doesn't know what it's doing, but it gets past that, and then it all goes back up again. And then all of that creativity and all of that thing that we had before in consciousness, we're going to get, get it back. And that is coming. That is coming. Okay? And that is in the near future. we just got to stick this out. Okay? I know it feels weird and everything that they're doing is just seemingly against us. But you could hold it in the uh, frame of mind as maybe they're just trying to protect the masses from the real knowledge because they, you know, they're panicky and they're scary and they can just freak out. You, you know, I, times I've like shattered some, I, I, I got a tiptoe now when I'm talking to people because if I go in deep and I just like, we, I talked to a guy earlier and he just got his hair off of me and walked off, didn't he? Because I mentioned alternative history. Don't touch my paradigm, dude. Yeah, I'm happy in my place. Yeah, my, my life's cutchy. I don't need it. Now, cutchy is cozy in Welsh, by the way, from Wales, in case you never noticed. Probably noticed, anyway. So yeah, NASA, Biggest bunch of liars, but not really worried about, you know, most people going on about, like, where they're ripping us off. Well, they're not ripping me off, because I'm Welsh and I don't pay NASA. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's, um, the biggest question people mostly ask is why. There's so many reasons for why, guys, why they will hide it, you know. Like I said, they're maybe they're trying to protect the place. But the thing is, is this coming out whether they like it or not? There's tens of millions, probably hundreds of millions that know about flat earth. We're white guys. I seen a I seen a meme the other day in Japan. They know nothing about us, we know nothing about them. It was an auditorium full with a thousand people, all doing flat earth science. They're all flat earthers. These they you know they got places in Spain and in and South America where this uh, this is getting really massive. I know Google tells us that this is fading away. We had bigger hits back in the day than um, Lady Gaga or Trump and all that. We were the biggest thing on the internet. And then they said that it was going quiet. No, man, it went the other way. I got a suspicion that this awakening probably was something to do with why they locked everybody down. 
stops everything, stops everyone, you know, on that forward lurch. I mean, we've got to quiet these people down, we've got to shut them up, let them stay at home and have a little think about what they're doing. <laughs> so, yeah, let's have a little giggle at NASA for a minute, because um, this is uh, the all-knowing creator. I think the creator put it here. I think that we're divine. I think that we already know the answers. We already know. What we're looking for is confirmation. What's that, bro? Yeah, I am. I am. I am. The thing is, I could just go for hours. <laughs> Confirmation is what most people are looking for. We already know the answers. Okay? Endless amounts of NASA messery. This one here, I'll show you seen the videos. They got literally a cloth door that, you know, flaps in the wind, which is absolutely ridiculous. And obviously, this is scientifically impossible on a ball. Okay, ships hanging upside down, I would love to see. Maybe they can show us that with the Hubble telescope. Zoom in to maybe Melbourne, show us all of them people walking upside down. That'd be really groovy. There's loads of things we can do. <laughs> Instead of investing all that money and all that then trolls. There you are, Daffy there, he's just killing the globe for me, well done. Yeah, yeah make the light big enough, make it simple, keep saying it, and eventually they will believe it. Adolf Hitler, no shit, that's exactly what goes on, keep saying it. So, does that drag you nuts? Space hair. Space hair. Does it do your head in? Yeah? Yeah, she's upside down, obviously, isn't she? I don't want to know what's going on with her hair, but imagine if that was a real scenario with all of that stuff lying around and hairspray and uh, water with all of the devices and wires. It's just imminent death. I remember when um, Smelly Kelly was on um, British telly, um, and he basically... Oh, God. They asked him what was the most uh, scary thing. I thought he was definitely going to say the, the fear of imminent death. He said, oh, when your socks go missing. And the guy was interviewing when your socks go missing? He said, yeah, you'll never find him again. I was like, oh my good God, you people. Look at him. So this is, um, the, there's Neil, he loves space rockets. Well, we know about Neil, don't we? So, um, sex anytime, <laughs> in space, apparently. Yeah. And that's what somebody left their dog on the moon. He's still digging for a boat. Yeah, 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 he's still up there till this day. Because apparently, because with the time thing differential, like, he's only going to live for 100 years up there. No one will even know. Better, if you go to Mars, you can live to like hundreds. It's great, guys. There's Neil when he gets to Europe on Flat and British. He doesn't like me at all. Well, he won't like me. He's bouncing to Europe on me. No, my link there. Look, there's a word in the moon. Yeah, I'd love to. Oh, this guy, yeah, oh my god. Oh my. So it costs like $60,000 a, a, a pound in weight to take stuff up to the ISS. So he takes a load of weed up, he takes food with him, and he takes a guitar and a gorilla suit because it's £80,000 a pound. He can take what he wants. It's absolutely ridiculous. And he's got pizza breads. We've got the crumbs get stuck in everything. 1969, a bit of psychedelia, make it all complete. Mix it all true, you see. And what a brilliant. Oh, look at this. So. What you get with the ISS, you will not see one video of the ISS where they don't do the old tucking. Do you know about the tucking? So they tuck all of their shirt in and all that into their trousers to hide their harnesses, okay? And they do the old, because if you don't know whether you can notice, he's got a square leg. Because square leg's natural. Everyone's got a square leg, haven't they? And he's got like this padding in his chest as well. Can you see the padding every time he flips? Because um, everyone's got a square chest and padding, hasn't they? So yeah. But that's been caught out a million times, hasn't it, what they're up to on the uh, IFS. Um, there's Ozzy Osbourne, he was going to go up to the moon. Did you see him? Yeah, he got confused, they brought him back, so I feel like they've been paying for him. Nice one, Ozzy. So, that's not my words, I'm just saying. I'm a flat earther, we just say, okay? So, um, football on the moon is brilliant in zero graph, well, a little bit of graph. That happened. Go on. What ever happened to the space shuttle anyway, eh? They flew that over New York on the top of apparently a jumbo jet. Okay, could have gone his own. Oh, this guy here, yeah, uh, Vetch. Yeah, Tony Vetch. He was um, he was on an interview on uh, with Holly Willoughby and um, you know the ones that jump queues. What's their names? Yeah. So the queue jumpers he went on there with, and he came up with a load of stuff as well about how um, you know completely safe it was and not to much. Hi, 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 Emma, on the moon. So he's got his door open, it's okay inside, you can see a guy in the background, two guys in the background, it's perfectly safe, it's only a vacuum, nobody dies. So apparently that's what we're doing, loopy loop, different directions all at the same time, all in the vacuum of space, spinning, because we're all 
water apparently sticks to a spinning ball. Okay, let's try that in the in the garden, see if that goes down. So apparently, he's doing that. I don't know what the legality is in that space. We should actually check. That could be a criminal offence. We should actually make, make report him. What do you think, Neil? Leave me out of it. Well, 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 all right, then. So, das, Disney, NASA, they're all exactly the same organisation. They do exactly the same things. They are dream weavers. And they weave you a dream. So, who's the most intelligent person in the world, then, um, Albert? Uh, I don't know. Don't ask me. Ask Nikola Tesla. Yeah, no shit. Okay. Please notice, in German, Stein means stone. And an expression, dumm Wiener Stein, means total idiot. Uh, this is why he, possesses, um, he poses for the photograph, sitting on a big stone, mocking all that knew the meaning of his name. Albert Idiot. And he's got a um, really lovely little lady sandals on you, yeah, like you do. You know, you're a lady. <laughs> it's alright, he's a lady. Okay. So you're going to get in the village. No. Antico Tech. Now we're going to move on. I'm going to briefly go through this, right? I've got a subject that I basically brought out maybe about uh, seven years ago now, and it's taken off. It's everywhere. If you, could, you know, if you're through TikTok, if you're everywhere, everyone is talking about Mudflats and Antico Tech. Antico Tech is a form of free energy, okay? Now, this place um, that we rely on now. Uh, relies on um, e explosive energy, like the internal combustion engine. Back in these days, it was implosive energy. And there's another form of energy here, guys, and it's magnetism. And these people of this era, they knew how to harness a charge for magnetism. Like, like Tesla told us about the, uh, you know, the unlimited potential. All you needed to do was tease it out. They used the things called resonators. These things here with mercury and bolts. Some, some people say red mercury, but mercury and balls into resonators. They would oscillate and vibrate in the wind or in the ether, and they would create a charge, which would go down into these things here, which are tiles. Tiles, um, they're basically conductive, and they would be used later for energy, free energy. The free energy of the civilization we regard as Tataria, okay? And they were in a golden age. They, if you think to yourself, oh, well, they invented the railways, the underground, and they did all of this stuff in the 1800s, there's hard evidence, right? They were actually digging the railways out, and they were already there. Same for the underground, uh, London Underground, for example. There's the crown and resonators you get on top of buildings. You see them all over the place still. There's some in, I see them warm up in the town centre. They had some antiqua tech. Still, old uh, Victorian antiquity on some of the buildings. And this is essentially what I have covered. I covered this by going through ancient manuscripts, um, Lee Van der Haar Atlases from 1733, and I noticed an abundance of churches, um, and then I just put two and two together, and I thought, well, then, you know, the higher up you get, the more electromagnetic potential, more static potential. So the higher up you go, like a church spire, um, you're up there and you put a resonator on top, it makes perfect sense. And I also think post reset there was more EM activity than there is now. Uh, the people's clothes uh, sort of suggest that they, uh, they got some sort of protection on. You know, the women always wear uh, one brilliant gown, gowns, which makes no sense in a muddy environment. They're going to pull them up, but all of the men wear hats. Um, and they all seem to have uniforms as well. So, uh, like, Basically, they're all saying good morning to one another, and they're all in black uniforms like they're mourning something. I wonder what it is. So yeah, the antenna, antenna the conductor, the ball of mercury, the resonator here, and then it goes through a frequency into conduits, and then into transformed into usable energy sources. Okay, now they would have had this active up until probably the late 1800s. We think that they were switched on. I've got some evidence it's still active. I'll actually show you in this post if I get enough time. But they sort of got rid of by 1900 were the advent of um, Edison uh, because if everyone's basically got free electricity, where are they going to put the meters? And they just slaved everybody with their utilities for the last hundred years. Because, you know, I was watching a YouTube video uh, only earlier, there was people like living in caves in Iran and they had nothing and they didn't need anything and they weren't particularly worried and there was no one at their door either. 
And they didn't seem to have a care about anything. Um, you know, they, they didn't have any resources, they didn't have any electricity, they didn't seem too bothered about it either. So, all uh, China, Japan, all of these things, these are also resonators and they're on top of the gold buildings. Everyone's got their own version of antiqua tech. Here is an old picture of Russia. What you see the is abundance on the old photographs of these things here. u bends. What you don't see is any wires attached to them. They're not the telegraph, because we can see the telegraph in other pictures alongside. These things are just there, and they're next to these things, which is electricity generator, gener generators, and then it's fed down into these things, which are these u bends and then that is circulated through, um, I don't know if you noticed the amount of steel bollards and chains that are all in antiquity and railings which they all removed in World War II. Uh, they said that was for the war effort, it wasn't, it was to cut down antiquity. Trams, um, in the past, um, were they all run by a horse cart or, or overhead electricity? Not in this case. You can make your own mind about what the propulsion is for this, but it's going over a steel bridge which has antiquity this thing has got something inside which is self-generated. It's picking up electricity straight from the ether and it's running on that. And that's exactly what they were doing. Cars were electric before they were petrol. The internal combustion engine and we're still on it after 130 years makes no sense whatsoever. These bends here, no wires between them. They were energy transference. This tram here is in the centre of Moscow. What is this propulsion? There's no wires above it, there's no horses on it. This is in the days before the motor car, when it's still a horse and cart. So I think they're using free energies on trams, and some of the trams show you these things inside. I can't tell you what they are, but this ball inside, um, we see quite a bit in antiquity. We've got some ideas of what this ball could be, but it's a magnetic device, um, which I'm gonna do on a future post, okay? Um, I've also talked about circuit board cities. Now it seems that all of the cities are on older grid patterns and places like um, Angkor Wat in Cambodia can be literally overlaid with the motherboard of the computer and they're identical. And church floors have got conduits for motherboards and computers. Now why would they be doing that? Because the whole thing is acting like a computer. The whole thing melted down like a computer melts down and gets reset. This place it's been designed a long time ago and we have been reset. We can see the existence of the older world. And this, this um, circuit board city, okay, is it everywhere. You can see it everywhere. You can see in Siberia uh, parallel lines. I posted them on my channel. They go for hundreds of miles, perfectly straight, perfectly perpendicular. Somebody's been putting these petroglyphs there in the past. But what, what we're saying is, is, is the grid system for other older worlds, older civilization, highways, cities, etc. You can see these lines all over Nevada and places like that in America. These lines, these petroglyphs, these grids are worldwide. Um, this place, so this is a sky train. Um, this is in a German city close to Frankfurt. Um, and basically, it's using electricity and it's at the turn of the last century. This is 1900. This thing was built in the 1800s, and you can see this is an old world which they built everything on horse and carriage, yet for some reason they're able to put up these massive steel gantries, this massive steel, um, you know, thing for holding the train, and it's driving on electricity when the rest of the world is apparently on horse and carriage, but not so. You can see how superior and advanced these people are at this time. Um, I think, because there's um, evidence, Liverpool had a sky train and they got rid of it by the 60s. Uh, Philadelphia, New York, other places had sky trains as well. Um, I think that the whole place had a lot of sky trains in the past. Um, but you can see the size of these uh, viaducts, it just shoots through. Look at the size of these uh, buildings in the past. Superior architecture. They used to use a thing called the divine. Oh, excuse me. But to um, divine principles based on sacred geometry, okay? They don't do that in the modern day at all. They can't do it. They've lost the technology or they're just not going to repeat it. Buildings were living buildings. They're made of stone. Stone is crystallized by structures. You know, crystal holds memory. It's in your computer. You know, it's a silicon chip. These buildings were conscious. 
you can feel it. I've been into some, when, you know, when I was back in my merchant navy days, I used to go into some of these big Russian buildings. I go in there, the ceiling was massive high. I thought like I was going to get a nosebleed. You know, this thing was overpowering. You know, when it's a building, how can a building be doing that to you? But um, excuse me. So yeah, they were using amazing technology like that. Now Antigua Tech, this was caught last summer. Now, if you can imagine the energy fields, like you get off the top of pyramids, okay, electromagnetic or electric magnetic energy field vortex or torus traveling above it, and it's been, you know, you can see there, there are a couple of spotted here in America here above, and it's basically freaked them out a bit. And I've also got some evidence of um, Antiquatech still active, excuse me, I'll just get rid of that. Oh, excuse me. Oh, right, just make that smaller. Excuse me. Uh. Damn. Uh -huh. Oh, there you go. Oh, damn. Excuse me what about that. So, um, Antigua Tech. Now, this is um, a temple in Angkor Wat, um, excuse me, in uh, Phnom Penh the capital of Cambodia. Can you hear that? So some of them are still doing it. Okay, now I was in the Czech Republic uh, in 2021 and it's just full of Antigua tech and literally at night when you go around you can see like an aura or a glow around the Antigua tech still to this day. I think there's still a lot of them. They're still um, primed for active Antigua tech. You know, and in this case, it's still going. And we've got um, a backup collaboration for that as well, because there's a YouTuber called UAP. We found a magazine cover um, with that, um, you know, basically doing that on the front, uh, whatever. That's like a St. Elmo's fire, you know, similar to, similar to that effect, but static electricity, and it's got that cracking and that clicking, you know. Very unusual. So that's some evidence of Antigua Tech active uh, still to this day. So that is one of my one more of my discoveries. Excuse me, with the microphone. Um, and how long have I got here? He's not there, is he? So what, um, another thing I discovered, and I took covered it quite a bit in my book actually, is um, this technology. You have good of mine. Um, the churches, um, or what I call the church devices, of energy centres were once healing centres. So what I suggest is after a reset, the people that come along after a reset, which we regard as arrivals, because most people have been in bunkers, gone underground, <laughs> and they come up and they find these churches with nothing to do with God or religion, by the way, until they took these over, and these pipes, these pipe organs, which are all connected together, um, they produce a sound, a resonance, a vibration, and this vibration can heal you. Okay, they can eliminate four, three, two, for example, frequency. So these these places, churches, were healing centers. People used to go in there. They used to be elevated and exhilarated by the organ music. When they came out of there, they were like, "Oh my God, I'm born again." That was God. It wasn't God. It was the organ yeah, that did it. But. So um, it's good for your organs or anything else that begins with org. Um, there was one note, which is called the brown note, which they um, basically removed in the 1700s because apparently it was affecting people in the pews a little bit too much. It was getting embarrassing. So they removed that note. They dropped the tone. Uh, but it is a technology also that can create a charge. <laughs> that can create a charge. You know, I'm going to cover briefly, if I've got enough time, the fashes, which is... That thing there, which is what you see in Roman um, iconography, which is a bundle of sticks pressed together, which I proposed, and I got really popular actually, were a type of weapon used in the antique world, which is akin to a dual weapon or a phaser, something like along those lines. That was the bad side of it, but the good side of it right, was healing, making plants grow for, with electroculture, making plants grow four times the size. So the key was, with this technology, which is regarded as technasmia, which is an arm of Antiquatech, another thing that I um, unfolded, was that they placed these, these beautiful organs, under these. Stained glass windows, 
which are treated with lead and specific properties. And these, uh, they, they work like car speakers. They augment the resonance and the sound out into the ether outside. So everyone outside in the community is, is invigorated, is on a higher state of consciousness, literally being the best they can. And you can see it in the pictures of these people in the day. Everyone is healthy. I know they say that we were all chucking buckets of pee out to the window and had no culture whatsoever, but that is not the case, guys. We were highly, highly cultured in the past, more so than this now. This is going backwards. We've come backwards a lot, guys. You can just see it. Look at the handwriting of the people in the 1800s and you'll see exactly what I mean. That creativity is gone. None of us do that anymore. None of us. And the skills we need to like, literally survive, like sewing, knitting, woodcraft, anything that we would need outside of the internet is lost to us. So you can see a Jesuit church here and these windows, they all have a somatic pattern. If you don't understand somatics, vibration causes a pattern in water or sand. Each vibration causes a different cymatic frequency and these windows are all set at a separate cymatic frequency to do a separate job. And these organs create the resonance and the sound. They're augmented through the stained glass windows which have lead qualities in them and other properties as well. Um, especially the rose windows. There's literally magical properties for them. And they are beautiful. They are beautiful windows. These are uh, stained glass windows and you can see the pipes on there they're facing out into the church for people to get the full blast of this organ music which was where it was at in the past healing well-being electroculture better environment better energy in the air full stop not you know not that uh -huh. everything is uh up and that's what these things create where it is now it is now. I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not missing it. I've been around 56 years. Things were not like this years ago. You know, the, the, the 90s were okay, if I remember rightly. They were okay. Not brilliant, but they were okay. So um, let me just show you Fache. So um, this was probably one of my biggest decodes, um, where you get a bundle of rods put together, okay, and it creates a charge when you do so. And this thing is encoded right through antiquity. You can see it on all sorts of buildings. This is the Fasches and the Lubris. And they actually state um, in the official narrative this was a weapon, it was used as execution. I'm suggesting this is an ancient electromagnetic weapon, and I'm suggesting that the technology of the ancients was electromagnetics, in okay, magnetism. Not like today, with explosive technologies, this is implosive technologies. This is where it's going at. There's just no toxics, there's just no waste, there's no. These are uranium rods, which coincidentally look exactly like the fashions. I've been thinking all along about the nuclear hoax, and I've been thinking that, you know, they're boiling water using um, fashions radiation rather than uh, the uranium that they say is, you know, also dangerous to get a hold of, and all of the mining. And this is my laser. My laser is exactly the same as the fashions, and does exactly the same thing. It's a laser. It's built the same as a fashions all bounded rods put together and it's exactly the same as an undersea cable. This was put down under the Atlantic Ocean apparently by the Great Western Brunel's famous ship and it was the first under Atlantic sea cable to connect Europe to America. They were supposed to put it down in the 1860s. This thing, if you look at it on the side, is exactly the same as a fascist and I'll put it, it's exactly the same as a church window because we're all looking at the same technology. Allow me to continue. There's the sea cable that apparently went into there, and I think it was there already. And there you can see the outside of a somatic window. I'll just show you that before I show you this. So there's experiments you could do with, you know, uh, oscilloscopes, uh, words experiments like emotos, where they show you, you know, human feelings like love and uh, empathy will express beautifully in uh, water. And words like hate or despise, we look like lumps of poo in water. Um, these are somatic patterns, and they are the same as what you exhibit in church windows, showing you that church windows were a somatic science, and they were a resonation science, and this place is missing out big time. This comes back, and the whole world will benefit. In the beginning was the word. Word is a vibration. First words in the Bible in the beginning was a word. 
and then the word was God, the word was love, I think. Um, DNA, uh, if that's a thing, but the somatic patterns on an oscillator unit are exactly the same as what you get with church windows. Not only church windows, star forts. If you don't know about star forts, these are everywhere in the world. There's at least 10,000 we know of. They're supposed to be there, put there in antiquity, probably around the Middle Ages, they think. Um, they say they were defensive um, bastions, but that's not so because everyone in the world shared exactly the same plans for the star forts. They had exactly the same as the science of church windows. It is fractal geometry breaking off. This is showing you this is a highly advanced science and it's nothing to do with um, knights and horses and cannons and battles because that's what they want us to think we were. And I really don't think that's all we are. I, don't, I think it's all bullshit. I don't think that anybody's going battling anywhere. They're all of the wars are on television, you know? And um, the bombing campaigns of World War II, that had to be something we'd just get rid of antiquity. You know, Dresden, for example. You know, there's no reason that should have happened to, you know, a civilian centre. All those people, it's just absolute murder. And what is it? The most beautiful pearl of an 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 antiquity in the whole of Europe, you know? And it just all got burnt out. To hide this technology of the past, to hide this beautiful antiquity. So this is the flower of life, but it's also identical to when you look down a fascist because it is all exhibiting the same thing. It's all interconnected and it's all exactly the same science. Fascist science. And that's what it's all about. Here is a, an experiment you can see in some matrix. This is quite beautiful, actually. This is sound. And you wait, what you can see, sound. So they put a sound through it. And then the ball will show you the somatic pattern for that sound. Sound. Looks like that. And the colour also. They add the colour. The colour is the sound too. <coughs> so, sacred geometry in semantics, which is in technology, which they don't practice in the modern day. This is how far we come backward. So um, I'll just give you a couple of um, examples of mud floods. So in my subject, what I propose is, is there was a cataclysm, some sort of event, all ancient, uh, all ancient cultures tell you there was a reset. All ancient cultures, the Bible in Genesis, Noah's flood. You go into the Veda, you go into the Jewish religion, you go into Arab, the Quran, all of them talk about a reset. Now what we're going through right now is the apocalypse. This is the apocalypse. It means the unveiling. The truth is going to be shown to us, guys, but we've got to be spiritually ready. We've got to be right inside. We've got to do it right. Because this is our only shot. This is, this is the crossroads of humanity. We're going to break it or we're going to make it. We're going to be there bitches forever or we're going to make it and we're going to stand on our own two feet. Because we can manage. We don't need them. Our greatest enemy is the man. How the can that be? You know, we've been terrorised and tortured since day one. They all of the, you know, stacked against us, you know? All of it. How is that supposed to be? So we're going to have a fair shot of it in the future, and that's what's coming. All of this technology, no more bills, free energy. There's old ladies freezing their ass off in winter when they've got free energy. Sickens me. They got it. they got free energy. And they've been using it as well, you know? I think that... Um, these wind farms, for example, I don't think they're generating shit. I think that they're actually burning electric off, is what I think. I don't think, yeah, I really do. And the money they're making on them is what the price of the thing is. They're like half a million. They're all over Texas, aren't they? And the price of putting them up and the footprint of them... Excuse me, I need to scroll through images, so I need to do this a second. Okay. So, um, evidence of mud floods. So what we're seeing here is buildings what are you going to see? When you go into Bournemouth, especially along the Lansdowne Road, there's loads of them, it's buildings that have a lower level window which is completely submerged below ground level. Now if you asked, well, asked an architect what exactly was the thinking about these digs or these basement buildings, and they say, oh, it was in vogue at the time. But in a country like Britain, it makes zero sense because we have snow, we have floods, we have water. These things always get damp. They're not healthy places to be. And everywhere has these underground cellars and windows. Everywhere in Christendom. You've been seeing this in the past on this building. The mud came up to the 
second story, they dug it all away and they made it visible. And the front door you can see in the air there, that would have been the original front door to walk in. And the rest would have been, you know, as you can see it's there, the veranda. So that has been dug out of the mud. And you can see examples here of the world that is below our feet. And this is in Paris, this is two, you know, maybe 20 stories below ground level. And there's, you know, pillars holding up an ancient world that was there before. Uh, building sites are brilliant for showing us the ancient world and the world that was below our feet. And it all gets filled with mud, you can see, you know, again, with um, Egypt and all Asian cultures, Baalbek, um, the Phoenicians, the um, Babylonians, the Persians, all of them have got exactly the same narrative, okay? There was a flood. Yeah, if I was to ask to guess, I would say that the gates of Colossus or the gates or the Straits of Gibraltar would have been landlocked at some period. There would have been some seismic activity. I think that that crashed in, looking at what the Atlas Mountains look like, uh, you know, on the other side of... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if any of you have seen that, but it's just a thousand foot cliff that's just been split. You look at it, you're like, whoa, what happened to you? Um, and maybe the water just came in and flooded the entire civilization that is now the Mediterranean. Yeah, that could have been an entire civilization. That is, well, there's enough evidence that could have been because there's an entire city off the coast of Alexandria in Egypt. Okay, and then you can just go under there and there's streets and statues and all the rest. They just said that, you know, oh, it just got taken by water over time, whatever. And this is a picture of Kansas City. This was a, a city full of mounds. Apparently, I say they went in there and took the mud out. Um, you can see houses up here and just literally, you know, 50 foot high uh, mounds of mud um, that everyone came in and removed. And this is the idea of what we're thinking, is a lot of the buildings, they got sub-basements, sub-basements and sub-basements. In Nottingham they go three storeys, in Cardiff they go two storeys, different cities even deeper. And you can see this classical building and we say that, you know, I'm not saying that it actually does go that far down, but there have been many mud floods over the periods of time, and that could indeed be the scenario. And uh, other evidence of mud flood, this is in um, Bunker Hill in Boston, and that hill there was completely removed. The funny thing was, is there was a Greco-Romano obelisk on top from what is essentially the Roman world. What's that doing in Boston? I don't know, they removed it. They removed the mud muddy, muddy hill, that was Bunker Hill, and all the houses wrapped it. You can see here, removing the mud, Kansas City. There's plenty of examples, you can see the same for Seattle. Um, this is a city or a town they found under a field in Texas. In Texas, the Texas Wall. Um, and you can see there's windows, in uh, some, um, some examples you can literally see like Phoenician architecture in some of these buildings. But as you can see, it's below the field, it's below ground level. Okay? People were living there then when it was below ground level. There's another example of Paris. All mud flooded from the old world. There's another example. And that's what, uh, like eight stories down and there's still pillars from however long ago. There's a Coptic church and as you can see, that's still mud flooded in. They, there's a lot of examples where they just, you can see in time, you know, late 1800s, these places are still full of mud. They come in and dig them out later. And I think they've done that for the whole of the world, which is why and you get, like with these windows, you get a retaining wall and a railing in front of them in every single regard, away from the window, maybe a couple of feet. So if you're in the, in the basement of that room yourself, you're looking out the window, all you see is a wall. All you see is a wall. It makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> so what I think, rather than remove a billion tons of mud, they just dug the mud away from the front of the buildings and put a retaining wall down and left the rest in, let rest in and just hired the road level, which is essentially what they did. <laughs> So, um, there's a statue of uh, what we know is to be a Phoenician, and that's buried in the mud from civilization, and that's in Texas as well, the Texas Wall, which is a civilization under a Texas field. This is happening everywhere in the world. This is a Russian town, as you can see. They got beautiful, large, masonry stone buildings, but as you can see, the windows are half buried. They can't manage an infrastructure. They can't manage a, even manage a sidewalk. They have wooden planks. And all of the streets, and can imagine that in winter, how anything would get around? How did they even manage to build these places? How did they even drag it there? He's wondering the same look. That's Pompeii. <laughs> Pompeii. Which I think is a bit of a sire. So, um, but in the, even in the modern day, can go to hell. This is um, actually a, a catastrophe of manure and mud in the rain <laughs> in the turn of the last century. It's just turned to a quagmire. So it just... 
A good example how difficult it would have been to build antiquity if the roads go like that when all they had was horse and buggy. Makes you think. And some of the examples that I could show you of colossal architecture. For example, the Moscow Opera House. They dug it out. This is the ground level here on that line I'm showing you. And these doors, that window, that door, that window, window, at one time were all under the mud and below ground level. It makes you wonder why they would have windows below the mud, but they dug it all out and that's what you see. And I seen exactly the same thing two years ago when I was in Prague, Prague Station, exactly the same. They dug it all away from the side and there was a door down there, a beautiful wooden door that was under the mud from the old world, which just blew my head off. I put it on a video but had evidence, you know. This evidence of mud flood is in every city, you can check it off yourself. Half buried windows make no sense to man or beast, especially in places that have snow and ice. Um, and this is what I picked apart. Um, this is the Bindenhof in The Hague, and there's a photograph here of uh, 2007. And what we found, I did the measurements on it, just to prove it to myself and to everyone else, actually, that this place was further down in the mud, that much. There's the ground level of 2017. <coughs> okay. And there. These piles, these uh, pillars here, excuse me, have mostly disappeared. A lot of them have disappeared. So that has taken a mud flood as well, 17th century Denag. These got dug out in India. You can see that the road was sure. They dug it out and it's exposed all, what essentially are columns and stonework. Um, this building here has got mud up to the side of it. So what came first, the house or the mud? Make it all right, up. That's mud floods and that's in Kansas City as well, when they dug all the mud out. So that is another subject. I've been doing many of them over the years. Antiquitech, mud floods, balloons. Um, God almighty, so much. How am I doing there, bro? All good, all good. All good? All good. Okay. Another subject I've been looking to is... Huh? Is anybody falling asleep? No. You're actually listening? Then we're quite good. We're all good. <laughs> it's like a flat today, isn't it? <laughs> That's my show on the weekend where I do wiggly flat folks and crack jokes. So, um, expositions happen to everywhere in the world. What I think is the expositions were in the existence of an older world. They completely destroyed all the expositions, hardly any of them left in the modern days. Some of, they say that these were built out of temporary products, but um, in many cases, especially in Paris, that some of this stuff is left to date. There's no way that this was made out of temporary inferior products. What we see here is the 1900 exposition we had in Paris, which was the Eiffel Tower was built for, which is obviously some sort of free energy antenna um, if you could look here, this row, um, you can see on the first floor, and there's these things here on the top, these little shapes look like shells. Um, that's completely gone. Um, then apparently, there was a fire in the Eiffel Tower, because apparently, metal catches a light, but there was a restaurant here, apparently had a fire, the whole thing went up. And all of this gantry with the free energy stuff is not there in the modern day. It's completely gone. Um, just something else I'm going to draw your attention to, weirdly, is that girl, that statue there, Seems to have a human face. You see that? That's one, yeah. Well, it's meant to be a statue. I think it looks lifelike. It's spooky to me. But <laughs> so um, this is St. Catherine's in um, St. Petersburg. Now, what we find um, when we do our research, there's a period in the 1800s. So um, photography's been around since roughly the late 18th. 30s, they say, um, lith lithographs, etc. But then, I think they were, it's a really easy technology, I think they were there before. But there's a period between 1850s and 1870 when you can look at any city in the world and there's nobody at home. There's nobody about. Like the streets are empty. Cities with, you know, supposed to be have half a million people. St. Petersburg, it's probably 300,000 people at this stage. There's no one at home. This is St. Catherine's Church, Superior Antiquitech. If you read this book, it's based on the four angels, which is this model here, which is the dome, okay, Mount Meru, and these four pillars, one on each corner, which um, basically is the four angels' magnetic torus for the existence of the plane we live on, and it's replicated in architecture, microcosm to microcosm. They repeat everything, guys. <laughs> so the expositions had superior architecture like this, all taken away. 
to the modern day. This is in Boston. This is the type of architecture. As you can see, this one shows what we call mud mudflood attributions, which is a front door, which is up in the air, and all of these low windows, which are cut in half. That's a lovely old picture of Boston. And you can see some of these resonators or veins. They're called veins because they have veins through them, which interact with the electromagnetic charge. You can literally buy flags online on eBay today that um, basically capture charge. Flags. So a flag could have been a technology as well. Um, this is Rochester in New York, and this is a beautiful example in the state of New York of Tatarian architecture. It is sublime. It's based on, uh, as I said, sacred uh, geometry and sacred principles. They have these holes, these windows, these round windows, which are what we call technasmia ports, which are like smaller versions of the church windows, because even these smaller buildings would be creating a charge and would be beneficial. All of these buildings were living buildings. So that's a beautiful example, is Rochester. This is in Dresden, and that got bombed in the war, but they rebuilt it up. Um, it was a beautiful cathedral, but my God, again, four angels technology. The door are one, two, three, four on each corner. Exactly the same as the place we live. You see an abundance of uh, railings as well. We think railings were um, a type of energy transference. Um, they say in the official narrative, excuse me, they say in the official narrative, they what the fuck? They removed all of the metal from the railings in Britain for the war effort in World War II. But when you research it, you look into it, they say none of the metal ever made it to any Ammons factory and it all got dumped in the Medway. So it was just to get rid of, you know, th this stuff was a, was a technology. They couldn't really carry on going to go into the modern day with what they had in mind. And they had it all planned out. Things are planned out years in, in advance. Um, that's the part of the building in Ottawa. It's a returned building, beautiful, fully antiquitech. There's some more examples of antiquitech. You can see one of these resonating energy providing buildings. And, and again, with these U bends that had never had any wires on them. And built by giants. Another idea is uh, much of the architecture that we have is more suited for giants. It's just ridiculous to think that. You would build an arch, now this big, for people. This is in uh, Grand Central Station. And these are uh, tops here, these are Corinthian tops. This is, this, is, this is Rome, you know. And this building, you know, um, well, actually, Penn Street Station building, which was just as good, just as beautiful, they got rid of that. They had to. So another one of my decodes was, the, we all right, Ian? Air balloons were the transport of Tataria, okay? They got dumped in favour of jet plates so they could rip everyone off on jet fuel hooks, okay? So um, they got rid of this with the Hindenburg disaster, which was a psyop. If you watch a video, there's two, at least two blade, you know, balloons involved in two different locations, okay? I've shown, shown people on my posts. That was a psyop to put people off the idea of rising on completely energy efficient, relaxing, safe balloons, which everybody was traveling on. And um, what's more, um, if you notice on top of buildings, you get what's called a belfry, which is a tower without a bell in it. Um, this will give you an opportunity for a balloon to come in to your city and moor up and you get straight out and it delivers you to the place where you, where you, uh, where you want to be. Now, don't think this is beyond the bounds of possibility. They actually did it. Yeah, the, um, the Hindenburg used to couple up to the top of the Empire State Building, a doorway would come out, a gantry would come out, and everyone would climb out of the Zeppelin into the Empire State Building, and they would deliver straight to the straight to downtown New York. And they've done it in LA, in Chicago. These balloons were the transport of the day. So, transport exposition. So, um, expositions um, also have um, sort of well, can I put it, uh, social engineering program puts in them, okay? So it tells people how the world is. Hegocentricism, you know, they're showing people. Um, incubators, um, where they show you that they can in make a baby's growth a year in three days. That's what they're saying they can do. So a year old after three days, they're saying they can do it in exposition. Um, was it Seinfeld who said his father was... Um, Yes, yeah, Sean Seinfeld. He said his father uh, was um, an incubator, from, uh, an incubator baby. He was, wasn't it? Yeah, from um, one of the expositions. 
So really, if they could really pull that off, they could really increase the population tempo. Because the, you know, the population growth makes no sense, guys. You know, the whole world just pulled up nowhere. In the 1800s, you know, the biggest city in the world, apparently, uh, mid-1800s is London, and then all of the others, New York, and everything else is catching up. And then before you know, there's just like tens of millions in every city all over the world. And where did everyone come from, you know? It's, I know you're thinking, that, oh, well, everyone made it with everyone else, but that, if you do the mathematics on it, and another thing, they're telling us there's X amount of billion in this place. I can tell you that's a lie, okay? You go to Texas, right? There is nothing. As far as the eye can see, there's room for everyone in the world. There's just nothing but space. Everyone's in the city. If you go out to the country, there's nothing. We are not overpopulated. That's just another side. I have to scare you to think that shortages. There's less of this. There's less of that. Climate change. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. It's not the case, guys. So these u bends again, you can see this is coming from some sort of energy plant by here with the resonator, you can clearly see there, producing free electricity. You can see there's a gadget, he's actually guarding some of these. And um, if you can see, there's like these little beads or white balls on the side of this, which you, you know, it's some sort of, you know, if they're using a somatic or, uh, excuse me, some porcelain, uh, then that would have conductive properties. And there's another mud flooded Coptic church deep in the mud. So there's the world went before us. This is Wall Street. Apparently, all of our civilization you see in the background, including the Greco-Romano temple in the background, and this Greco-Romano temple, and all these massive buildings, were all built on horse and carrot. Okay. Yeah, of course they were. And here's San Francisco, a city that was completely destroyed more than once. I've covered it many times on my channel. Quite a, a nerving story. I won't be going there this time. Uh, we use another exposition, a beautiful example of a free energy building. Again, with that four angels technology, you know, the Mount Meru in the middle and the four angels on the outside. They are, if you're wondering what four angels are, they're electromagnetic vortices which run this place. Basically, the sun and the moon, okay, they travel on electromagnetic push and pull. So if you can imagine a circle in the sun, like this around that plane, it's an electromagnetic sort of pushing it onwards and the sucking of a magnet that's pushing it this way. And it springs to the middle and spring comes, which is why it's called spring, and it springs back out again, giving us our sun. It's as simple as that. It's electromagnetics to drive the sun and the moon. So there's the world we had before. Beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah? This is the same site in the modern day. They do it everywhere. I bet Bournemouth Seafront in the Victorian era was out of this world. Yeah, like most British seaside resorts. And now they put all of this weird stuff from the 70s there. It looks bloody dire. So, yeah, there's the world before. Even, even, a, even a, a beautiful pond under just a box down to bridge with all of that, you know, fountain and everything. And, you know, just attention to detail of these people. There it is in the modern day. Vandalism and junkies. Awesome. That's the world we got now. We haven't gone backwards, and the effort to uglyfy buildings. This is this beautiful building. It's got blowholes in the side from you know that free energy advancement in the past, and they just take it all off, and there it is in the modern day. They're taking the technology away. They do not want to have it. They cover it up as much as they possibly can. There's another example. It's got a technasmia port. This would have been you know you know giving vibrations out into the atmosphere. Covered, gone. And that one's in Brooklyn. That one there, beautiful building. And these things, uh, theatres, this one's got beautiful. Um, these balls you'll see everywhere. And I think there's more going on with them. They're another type of uh, antiquatec to do with Mercury. It's a beautiful little building, but the low window, again, below ground level. Front door, up in the air, makes no sense. What happens on a frosty morning? You're going to land on your ass and you're going to break your neck. But that's not important. We didn't design this place. Somebody else did. <laughs> Look at that, though. And what you find with these buildings as well, right, is they're predominantly top-heavy. If you were an architect and you do central line and symmetry, these, these buildings are predominantly top-heavy. They could tip over. And all of the juice, meaning the statues, the antiquatech, is all above the top level, the top floor, where you're never going to see it unless you're in a balloon. Then you're going to see it coming down the road. And then you land your balloon into the belfry, which is one supplied for on this building. 
It will cup along there, you climb off your balloon, smaller balloons as well, straight into this building. Also the obelisks, like Nelson's Column, um, other obelisks, they have staircases in them and they have doors at the bottom. So you could land on them, on a platform, dumb staircase, come out of the door, and you've been delivered in the centre of the city. And this is um, Antiqua Tech going insane. <laughs> this is in um, Brussels, in uh, Belgium. Um, you can see all of these just sticking up, interacting with the ether uh, to, to basically uh, get a charge. And basically, this thing is just an energy centre beyond belief. This is a superior building. And apparently, this is from the medieval period. Okay, this is a Gothic cathedral. So it was built by monks with copper chisels. Awesome. They smashed it. Didn't have time for praying or anything because it's always like just building brilliant stuff. Just makes you think, doesn't it? So yeah, that's been my field over the years. I've really enjoyed it. It's so beautiful to look at. You know, these are the expositions. They were fully electrified. You know, some of these examples, so this bit electrified before electric was a thing. You know, the first electrified city was supposed to be um, Buffalo. First electrified building was supposed to be JP Morgan's in New York, all attributed to um, Edison. Um, but these things, you know, some of them 1890s, fully electric, and it would have been free energy. They didn't have massive... Um, you know, plants to generate electricity until the Erie, um, at Lake Erie, you know, at uh, Niagara Falls was the first type of its uh, generator of its time. And that wasn't even in the planning of this period. So you've got to wonder where they're harnessing the electricity for to run them. You can see this building, all the lower windows, half cut, perfect mud flood, a massive architecture. And this is in Paris, beautiful old world building, absolutely beautiful, with two belfries, meaning no bells in them. So yeah, just uh, briefly before I pack this up, I've got enough time a minute. Um, also another technology, bells. Bells in churches. Now a bell in a church will chime every 15 minutes. Now it gives off a resonance and vibration. If you imagine that topping up a charge and then on the hour, the big dong, 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 and that will give it a full charge. So every 15 minutes it's going to be charging up whatever technology is going on in the resonator and the church bells um, you know, in abroad you can hear one church bell go and another one will answer and another one will answer and they answer further out into the, into the city you know, they don't go all in unison they literally are synchronised um, because it basically takes that charge right the way through the town of bell technology and bells, yeah, they got a specific quality some of them can be 4, 3, 2 the bells that we got now are not the bells from the old day they were removed in the second world war by Adolf Hitler and Stalin, they removed all of the bells from Europe, they said for the armaments program again, and they were all destroyed. Why? Because they were made of a specific metal for vibration and resonance. They're all being replaced in the modern day. And in the First World War, they had a collection of all the bells of, of uh, Europe as well. So none of the bells that are now, very few, are the original bells, um, they've been destroyed. So that's another form of technology and free energy as well. So these expositions, none of them exist. They all burnt down. Most of them are destroyed and demolished. And there's an example of Moscow, beautiful antiqua tech, covering Moscow. I've actually shown that picture. And this is in Belgium. I've actually seen this building. Beautiful architecture on it. It's just so decorative. But again, mud flood, low windows. And this is a picture of when the Romans visited India. <laughs> This is a picture of luck now. Something really bad happened in luck now in the 1800s. What you see is cl classical buildings, um, but in this picture, um, the ground is littered by hundreds of skeletons. Um, something really bad happened to luck now, some sort of uh, genocide um, in the days of the Raj. So, did the railway lines really get dug in the 1800s, or were they there already, just got dug out? Because we got endless amounts of uh, evidence that they actually were digging up existing railway lines. We've got plenty of these evidences. And I would think that that would include the underground. You've got to think, when they took all these railway lines out and all of these roads, they must be in a trillion tons of mud. Does anybody ever wonder what they did with the mud? What, they go and sprinkle over all the fields? Where did it all go? It must be a squillion tons of mud. Yeah, right, because they didn't, you know, they were already there. The structures were already there. Look at this thing. Greco Romano building. Looks like it's been through Armageddon, all reeds on top, everything growing because it looks like it's been at the bottom of a fish tank because it has been at the bottom of a fish tank. It's been in a flood. You can see that's flood damage. But again, just a, a solid block building that was designed to withstand reset because they did that with the past. These buildings, this building, these buildings, 
the people who designed them, they knew about reset and they put you know, uh, closes it to make these buildings survive. You just higher tiers, so the water's higher, you could just walk off into a higher balcony. And this was the biggest building of the 1800s in Brussels again, and it's the, the town hall, uh, the Hotel de Ville. And um, it was the biggest building in the 1800s, a fantastically big building, but again, many layers below the ground that had to be there already. And these beautiful buildings, this is in Ottawa again, all built by horse and cat. And this just to, uh, just to finish up, these pictures here are of St. Petersburg, 1850s. And this city this is supposed to have over 300,000 people at the time, which is a major European city. There's no people. There's no horses, there's no life. I'll give you more. There's no infrastructure. They didn't even have time to put lampposts up or anything. Nothing is there. Um, and no people. So we think that, you know, these buildings look like they're buried to me. You know, this, this thing here looks like that loads of steps once coming out and, you know, these are buried as well. This looks like the tops of buildings, you know, that they're all buried, you know, in mud. And again, you're never going to see a soul, guys. You're never going to see any birds, any dogs, any pigeons. And what you do see in these, in these photos is vanilla skies. They always AI out the backgrounds because they're hiding something in the skies. I think it's the blooms, the transport of the day. And what? What's going on with the sun at that time? Here's some pictures of the mud being dug out of the... After the American Civil War, they went and they say they reclaimed um, and rebuilt it all after the American Civil War. But I think they weren't. I think they were digging out mud. You can see there's a lamppost here, a ladder going up it, or a telegraph pole, and it's way buried in the mud and they're digging it out. Okay, here's other examples of wall digging the mud out in the American Civil War, which I think is a cover story for a wider catastrophe event. Again, below ground level, windows, looking out into nothing that would have been a previous civilization. Again, no people, no infrastructure, no lampposts, no people, no sidewalks, no nothing, just a city devoid of people. You can make your own minds up about that one. Spooky, eh? So, St. Petersburg, all of the cities that we've looked into at the same period, no people. Um, electricity, we had electric cars, there they are, this is an electric bus that was taking people around, 1800s, we had electric cars before they went to the internal combustion engine, which is stupid. Um, this is my last final mud flood evidence, this is in Liverpool city centre, and this statue was basically, up to this top level, this was road, or this was uh, the level of the road, and all of that, you can see there, including that window, was buried below ground level. There it is there, you can see, that's how much we're showing above. And then they dug it all out, and all of that was below. You know. So if you're looking out that window, you'll see mud. So this is from when that building was above ground level, and it's all been mud flooded. In. It's quite simple. So that's me, I think, guys, for the day. And there's electricity being used before electricity was being used. Free energy electricity there in Russia. Before they had it in America, they were enjoying it. No problem, though. So there's me, Pat of British Wiggly Flat Funds. Hope you enjoyed my little presentation. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Ian. Ladies and gentlemen, what can I say? Martin Leaker, give it up for Martin Leaker. Thanks, guys. It Thanks does, for coming. It does just go to show that we are all woken up to the shape of the earth, but we have no idea what it is. Nope. We don't know It's not a anything. globe. <laughs> Not a globe, though. And uh, thanks to Martin, his books, his research, we know that there were people here before us. What it is, we still don't know. But we appreciate Martin, we appreciate your work. They were smart. And, uh, thank you very much indeed, Martin. Thanks. Mm -hmm. now, are there any questions for Martin? Do we have any questions? Come on, mate, what's happening? Okay, I'm going to start at the back, if that's all right, and then we'll go this way. Eric. Oh. Eric, oh. hello. What have you got to say? Um, Good question. Right. Very good question. So, oh, very good question. Water below us. Right, there's water below us on the water table, okay? So if you get like seismic activity, basically this happened in um, Lisbon in the past and it happened in uh, Port Royal in Jamaica in the past. The entire city sunk into the mud. What happened was an earthquake. Oh, to when it was an earthquake and the place ground and oscillated, just shook, okay, 
and basically it mixes with the water table and it all turns to mud. Okay? There's another idea is if a mud or if there's a giant tsunami and a wave, um, also volcanic activity and ash, which there would be in a reset, all of that. Um, so it's a mixture of mud, of remains of the reset, um, and um, ash as well, you can find in it. It's quite a thought, sorry. It seems to be quite specific in specific areas, doesn't it? Sorry? The mud seems to be in specific areas. No. It's everywhere, it's everywhere, it's on Easter Island. The, the Moe on Easter Island, okay, are coincidentally buried exactly the same depth as mud flood the rest of the world, 30, 25 to 30 foot, okay? And the Moe are buried up to there next year, the rest is below ground, no one can explain it unless there was a mud flood. So I think this thing happened everywhere. If it happens on Easter Island, the most remote island in the world, it's happened everywhere. It was, it was, it was a cataclysm everywhere. Excellent. Excellent. Next question, please, from you. Had your hand up. Oh, thanks, Lou. Hiya. I was just wondering about um, uh, the pyramids in uh, Cairo. Mm -hmm. Have you looked at those? Have you... Yes, yes, I have. I've done hundreds of blogs and I stuff. Well, I've had the fortunate opportunity to go there and have uh, literally arrived in the city of Cairo, and you've got literally pyramids. Uh, uh, so on the outskirts of the city, aren't they? Right. And it's literally on a cliff, the pyramids. So obviously there's a mud flood that's gone, that's covering the... I have seen a picture of that. You just see cliffs where they come to them. It's like yeah. the, the, the Giza Plateau. So I was just wondering if you've done any research. Yeah, well, what I proposed for the... Um, I, I literally done a series on it. What I proposed was... Um, it was Noah's Ark, the main pyramid of Giza. Because basically... Uh, they had a king's chamber, it was a resonating chamber, they call it the whistling chamber. It gives up an audio, audible sound, you can hear it, the king's chamber. Um, but they also, in the queen's chamber, found up to an inch of salt, which is yet to be explained. And there's also a granite ball that they found, which is yet to be explained. So what I, what I suggested, what I, is that right? What I suggested was, no, um, no flood happened. And there's a thing called beaver technology. So it's technologies that beavers would use for set for dams, okay? Um, basically, point, pointy like star forts. So if a wave hits it, it would just break it up like a stealth bomber, okay? Pyramid is the perfect, it's an eight, the Great Pyramid of Giza has eight sides. You can only see it from above, okay? Um, and it, it, it acts as a, as a breaker for, for uh, water. So um, what I propose is you get the. You get battleships, excuse me, submarines that go under for 90 days at a time and they produce their own oxygen, okay? So I suggested that the, it was an oxygen producing facility and because in front of it is a city, underground. Under Giza Pato is a city, okay? And how East got the keys, you can't go down there, you can't look at it, but it's massive and it's under the Giza Plateau. So I think that, you know, people were not necessarily Noah and his family, but people were bunkering out. You know, um, these pyramids are all over the world, you know. They're, you know, uh, if you Google it, there's like 70,000 hits for underwater pyramids. Came and see, uh, all the Japan, stacks of pyramids underwater, you know, from, from the previous day. There could be people still in there, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying, I think that they could have been, they could have withheld a flood, and, and they could have produced oxygen as well, the same way as... Um, Do you know um, I think optimists were a technology. Um, I, I basically, I included in my book, I, there is evidence that some of them had gold on them. Um, I think it was a gold called electrum, which is like a type of monotonic gold, it's a specific gold, with really you know, profound electronic qualities. Um, so the obelisks, they would have been covered in electrum, and they would, they're all on circuses, what are called circuses, which is basically a circle, okay? And, and you will find them at nodal points, you know, where the energy is greatest. And this is all part of what I call the circuit board cities. These are part of... There's something in this place, right, which is, com which is making this reality, okay? Whether or not you want to think it in Tron or a computer game or a simulation or whatever it is, the fact remains that they put cities on circ like exactly like motherboards of computers for a reason. And the obelisks, with, with, uh, they would be like conduits, if you like, energy transference. And they're specifically put, if you look at the old maps of Rome, they put it in specific places. You can go up to the Hippodrome in um, Istanbul, I went there once, mad. 
they've got um, all of the things they apparently collected from um, the Byzantine Crusades or what have you. Um, and they've got different obelisks from different parts of the world. They've got one of them that's made of metal and it's just cool, like that. It's like, it just has to be technology, you know? Can't be anything else, but there's loads of Roman obelisks, you know, there, but I think they're technology, and a lot of them have got resonators on them anyway. So I think, yeah, they're definitely some sort of technology. That's what I think. Martin? Yeah, the main question, the main question I was going to ask, because of all the buildings around the, around the globe, I'm Everything that's across the, the earth, um, it's all red brick, and they still haven't found a company like Bagley Brick. No, yeah, that's quite right. They, they still don't know where all the bricks came from. Yeah. And most of the buildings that have been demolished, if they say are walls and that, is where they get all the bricks and that, and they collected. The mud. What is, what are bricks? But <laughs> and the, I remember watching one where they've got uh, the red bricks and it can batteries. There's batteries because it stores the electricity. Indeed. But you know the crystalline structure of these old masonry buildings as well. You know if you look you look at it with a magnifying glass, you can see that it's just like looks like just bunches of crystals put together, crossed together. These buildings have technology. I, you know they could probably hold memory. You know some of them, honestly. Spain. Cheers, thanks very much. Um, That's nice, good. nice to see you, Martin. How's it going, Cobber? Great for you to come down to Bournemouth. Wiggy. Um, best place to be. Yeah. Um, quick question, really. It's more of a rhetorical sort of combo question, really. A point I'd like to make, that is, and I'm sort of addressing the group a little bit with this, and it's good to have you here while I do, and that is that, for me, a bit similar to yourself, but only later, um, I made my journey through Flat Earth to then come to the realisation that actually not necessarily all my answers I need, but certainly all the uh, all the discrepancies were highlighted through old world stuff. Yeah. Because it's right there. Yeah. It's it's in your face. If you know what you're looking at and you know what doesn't make exactly. sense exactly. and you don't pay attention to the neighbours too much or your school teacher or your well dressed newscaster on BBC, I prefer ITV. Although they're owned by the same people, aren't they? Yeah. Doesn't but anyway, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. ignore all the noise and look right in front of you. <laughs> It's just astounding. Yeah. I've got people calling me Evidence. up now, sending me photos, saying, Sven, we were driving down A303 today, Close and we, look, we drove past this building, what do you think? And I'm like, well, what are you saying? Yeah. Well, look, the windows are underground. And I'm going, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, people are getting it. Well, of course they're getting it. Yeah. Having a closer right. question and go, well, obviously, the, the narrative is nonsense. Well, there is some direct evidence, but there's a ton of circumstantial evidence. You were going to take it to a court, uh, you know, a crown court. Yeah, there's enough to organize it. You know, they'd have to look at it, you know, it's just overwhelming. And unexplainable. And the thing outside is, of my narrative. And how much more did we used to have before they got rid of a lot of it? Through the wars and through... We're missing. Yeah. All the world and the people. There must be trillions that have gone before us. Yeah, the graveyards only go like 1850 and you're lucky... Six, you wouldn't see nothing 16, 14, 15. Where they all gone? Yeah. yeah, you get saints in churches and uh, like, you know, plinths and that. But where are all the people that went before us? Gone. Everyone's gone. No, no. Yes, Thank you, excellent. We've got the question here. Thank you, sir. Hiya. Right, up to you, My wife thinks we're giants. Is she right? <laughs> no, I don't think we're giants. I think we were giants, giants because of the, the building. Well, maybe, maybe the like weird. Like, have you ever seen uh, Gulliver's Travels, Lilliput? Yeah. Maybe we're the giants, and there's people like Lilliput, like little people somewhere. <laughs> In another land. <laughs> I, think I'm just fair, saying, I think it's fair to say that the earth was once inhabited, ruled or inhabited by giants. There is no question of that. In yeah. any research that you want to go to, there is no question. That and they were the ruling classes in a lot of cases as well, you, especially Rome. If you, uh, if you go back to the biblical scriptures, when the Nephilim came about from the fallen angels breeding with the daughters of men. They bore giants. It's in black and white, it tells you. Yep. There's plenty of evidence physically and there's plenty of video evidence of giants. We you know, we had a race of giants. We are not that race. We are a different race. Yep. We are a different set of people. There were giants before us. I think we were cohabiting. I think they were doing the same yeah, thing. Most of them would play basketball now. Yeah, man. Well, that's it. They're in the, well, in the Callum Globetrotters undercover, aren't they? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Any other? We've got a couple of questions here, Martin. Hold on just a moment. From this lovely lady at the back who's come Yay. all the way to London. Hello. Um, Hiya. I just wondered why would Hitler want to destroy the Belgian Um Because of the the qualities of the metal in them. You know, this uh, antique attack you had to go. You know, and then. They had to play along with the electricity scam too, because they were using it, okay? And they had bills exactly the same. Um, he had to get rid of Stalin, went more aggressive with it, with the belt smashing, but uh, yeah. Um, they had to get rid of Antigua Tech. It was basically still active, you know, in the early part of the last century. And um, like I showed you the examples, there's still, still some active even in the modern day in the Far East, probably is in Europe. Um, it had to go, because how are you going to explain to everyone what buildings start charging up? that everyone's paying bills. You certainly, you certainly don't want that sort of power with normal people. Otherwise you have no control. So I think it's more control, control. than the, the storing of esoteric knowledge. Yeah. Which yeah. You know, we wanted to do. Thanks. Tony, we have a question. Hi, Tony. Hi. Hi. Um, Hi. With Pompeii, uh, with it all covered, you can find the bodies. Mm -hmm. With the mud flood, where do you think all right. the bodies were in the skeleton? Okay, well, good question. I, I, no, it is a good question because I think Pompeii is bullshit. I think it's some sort of psyop, okay? Yeah, the whole narrative for they couldn't get away and they waited, you know, for this event and they couldn't get away in Herculaneum, two cities were destroyed, the whole narrative for it. So they show you what essentially a plaster carries bodies where the people are sitting there, okay, with pumice piling on their city, so it's a good idea to just sit there and wait. Some of them are making love, some of them are asleep, there's other guys sitting like this, and then the pyroplastic flow comes through, thousand degrees to incinerate them all, and they're just all sitting there waiting for it makes zero sense. I think it's a sign off. Yeah, I really do. Point. Excellent point, I think. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen, before we round the Oh, hi, please. Oh, we've got, oh, it's all going insane. Hold on, ladies first, sorry. Okay, <laughs> you're next. Hi, Lord. What did happen to the mud? What did happen to the mud? Where did they put it? Well, the mud that got taken away from the windows wouldn't have been that much. The roads are still the roads that were there, you know, with mud floods. So if you imagine a building, yeah, they sort of dug the mud away from the front of the building, they built a retaining wall in front of the building, so the only mud they've had to be removed is the mud that's in front of the window. And then they leave, because you look out of a window in a mud flood cellar, you're looking at a wall, and the roads are there. So that road and all that mud, that's the mud. Yeah. So they didn't have to remove 10 trillion tons of mud. They just left it there and took the buildings off. That's, yeah, because I was in uh, Birmingham City Centre. Oh, brilliant uh, mud flooders. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. You know, there's these big archways, which aren't archways. You know, they're just, they're yeah. just are archways now. Yeah, yeah. And, and the rest Facebook. is underground. Yeah, you can see all the Facebook. Yeah, Birmingham is amazing for mud flooders. It is, it yeah. is. Yeah. And I do think, yeah, they must have been giants to build these doorways. Oh, so honestly, they're just absolutely Why huge. Would no sense whatsoever. Churches exactly the same. They have just massive doors, and just like you go through a little door here to get in there. They can't even. I um, I noticed uh, when I was in Europe last, they had some doors. I took photographs of, and the lock on the door was up here. Yeah, for taller people. Mm -hmm. Thanks. That's great. That's great. That's great. That's great. This gentleman here, he doesn't work out for anything. <laughs> Come on, big guy. What's happening? Uh, yeah, um, so obviously you talk about uh, Antiquatech yeah. and um, there's clearly examples out there that the technology surrounding the uh, electromagnetic resonators still exists, but do you know anyone... Who's built one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, personally, that yeah. managed to reverse engineer or okay. we yeah. create something? Yeah, how, yeah, would you, how would you find out about that well, like yourself? We, we nearly built a fashe. Okay, so we tried to fashe, but a friend of ours um, in America, Chris, um, based on the work of my fashe, he built um, a nesting ball, like an orb, um, where the orb, like um, Russian dolls. So the orbs inside go ever decreasing smaller and smaller and smaller to get a ball in the middle, okay? Um, which is nesting technology. This, this will create a charge. Um, so he invented this ball based on you know, the work of that book and um, he showed me on a post, he said every time he, he basically, he, how much water, you can put um, a litre of water and it will give you a litre and a half back, okay? And he said every time he did this, he said I have military helicopters over the house because basically it, it takes electromagnetic fog away which is really noticeable to them. 
So uh, this, this orb created, um, nesting technology, um, created or cleared the electronic fog in the whole area and they noticed and they buzz him every time he does it. It's that profound. Nesting technology is a thing. There, there is technology available, particularly we've just come back from Mexico. There are, there's a person there and people there that have their own Tesla coils. Yeah. And the frequency that comes off of those things, and they, they leave them on all day, it's insane. And you feel different, you are different, you have a different cognitive ability in those areas. So the tech of the old world was for the benefit of mankind, and the rulers at some point said, hold on a minute, we're going to charge you for that. You know, electric's free, yeah. we're going to charge you. Water's free, we're going to charge you. So the group of individuals that came along and did whatever they did for the old world, left us paying for everything, right? And not knowing everything, we're thick as anything as far as they can do. With the work of Martin, the flat earth and the way we wake up, um, slowly we're peeling back those layers and, and hopefully we'll, we'll get the answers we always want. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing. Technology's not hard. No. That was the thing. Technology isn't difficult. It's just that we forgot how to do it. No, we're just taking another technology, another road. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's not the one we Ladies should Ladies and gentlemen, any other questions for Martin before we go? Well, I'd just like to say thank you very oh, much. Thanks so much for coming, guys. And seeing me. I really thank do you appreciate you it. Thanks Martin. so much. Thanks for the Catholic fire and everything. You really can cool. Martin on uh, Flat Earth British or on Martin Leaker, all on your social medias. Look him up. He's got some great books and great other information that we haven't had a chance to get here today. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks. We'll all see you next month. Thanks, everybody. Woo hoo! Go flat, we you guys. Stay flat, stay epic, guys, okay? Get that vibration up. Where's your street vibration, Phil? <laughs> well done, mate. Thanks, bro. Thanks, everyone.